guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing a review on Tamiya's F4S Navy Phantom Warbird Collection. So, let's get straight into the review. Hey guys, this is the Tamiya 17 second scale F4S Phantom. Got a nice piece of box art of the actual image of the aircraft that you're going to build. Not a painting or a computer generated image. So, quite nice looking in the front so let's have a look onto the back and uh, known with the Tamiya kits you get a nice detailed look at other parts of the kit that you can see once it's built so i uh, give you a closer look so there you go you can have a closer look at that right so let's uh, have a look inside the kit once we open it up i have on i have cut open the packets so they're not as hard to open so we have the sprues here and instructions and the so first off what we look at is we'll have a look at the instructions. So the instructions are fold out book or several pages of a fold out book. So all explaining how to build the kit, nice detailed. I find tunnel instructions even easier than airfix instructions to read. They're just nicely detailed, explaining everything, like the seats, how to create everything. And then on the back, here we have the sprue count. So the number of each part and what the sprues are, are on each sprue. And on the back here we have the two paint schemes for the aircraft. We have the Navy, no that's the Marines one, begging me pardon. And that one is the navy one. So, uh, yeah, those are the two schemes. And that's the instructions. So, looking at the decals, this is... These, these feel extremely thick and quite glossy. I have built this kit before, and I know that these decals are fairly hard to apply. They don't really move, no matter how much water is applied, and they sort of stick onto the model on the first time you put it down. So that's why I find it easier to use a bit of uh, Revell Decal Soft. It allows it to move more and then it will revolve around the edges and the rivets of the model kit. So that's some really quite nice stuff or you can get other makes, but I like the Revell one. Anyway, yep, so this is, the they look all right. They're not particularly too many decals, quite a small amount of decals, but it is, uh, they look all right and they're quite detailed. Next up, we have the parts to the kit. So I'll take out the parts and put them in separate bits, and then we'll do the glass parts after. Um, first, let me get them out. Right. Here we have on this sp sprue, we have two halves of the fuselage, um, at, um, four halves of drop tanks or bombs, I don't particularly know what they are. Here is the cockpit section, which is fairly detailed and has quite nice uh, moulding. Two halves of the ejector seats, which is also quite nicely moulded, but could do with some seat belts, like maybe an extra photo etched kit, like, uh, let me find an example of a photo etched parts, and like that, they would be quite nice on the kit some seat belts or something so uh that's the uh that sprue of the parts the, just to mention that these are all they have raised details nothing is placed inwards it's all raised details so that can be a slight problem when it comes to this but uh other than that it's uh quite nice two parts of the fuselage here we have the underneath and then the two sections of wings so we also have several missiles, um, uh, well, four missiles in total and four other missiles here. We also have the two ailerons on the back and two halves of the nose cone. I'm going to be honest with you, I dislike the nose cone being in several parts because I can never get a flush fit with it and it always becomes a difficulty to fill and sand down till it looks perfect, so I don't like that. And having built this kit before, because this is my second one, because I find this kit a nicely detailed and, and the best, really, on the market for one sim to get. Second, other than the Academy uh, Showtime 100 one. But um, 
this is a nice kit to build, so that's why I built two. Anyway, now we'll move on to the clear parts of this kit. So, um, having a look myself now, I've built, when I first built it, they were extremely perfect clear parts. But this one, they seem to have several bumps and almost a bit of clouding in it, which is a shame because the uh, and semi bits of scratching and a bit of flash as well. But when I first built this, the clear parts were insane. Like, I'd never seen clear parts like it. But uh, they're not the worst. Like, if you look, my finger is particularly clear in that. But uh, they're not the worst clear parts, but they're not the best. So... That is my opinion. So that is my opinion on the parts of the F4S Navy Phantom by Tamiya. Also, if we have a quick look on the box, here is the actual pieces of information on the kit. So you've got all the paints that is used, some photos of ones that are built, and then some more photos on the side. So that's the Tamiya F4 Phantom. Thanks guys for watching another video. That was the Tamiya F4S 170 scale Warbird Collection Phantom. It is a fairly nice kit, quite good moulding. Shame about the raised panel lines, but we would have liked some. Um, but it's alright, I suppose. It's the best you're going to get. I think it's an ex-Italari kit, but it's a fairly nice kit. Thanks for watching and goodbye.